In this chapter, I'm building Mando's iconic armor. A portion of this video is sponsored by KiwiCo. The future of play is engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. Welcome to chapter eight of our Mandalorian series. So far, we've built the flamethrower, the blaster and spear, the helmet, Grogu's cradle, the jetpack, the grappling gun, and even the Amban rifle. When everything's done, I'll don the entire suit for the first time and put everything to the test. It's gonna be amazing. With the finale quickly approaching, there's only a limited amount of time to get your very own Hacklorian t-shirt. So get one before they're all gone at hacksmith.store. For the past couple months, I've been busy creating the most important part of the entire project, Mando's iconic Beskar armor. After all, what good are all the weapons in the galaxy if you aren't protected? The thing is though, Mando's armor is pretty sparse. I mean, it barely even covers his body. In the original film, stormtroopers were notorious for having terrible aim. But after the fall of the Empire, well, in the Mandalorian Disney Plus series, stormtroopers are seemingly only capable of hitting armor with their blasters. Hey, Imperial scum! That's so weird. Also, we're making a few limited edition ingots of Haskar, which will be available at hacksmith.store. So make sure you sign up for notifications because they're gonna be quite the collector's item. Now, I may be called the hacksmith, which is a play on words of blacksmith, but truth be told, I haven't actually ever made any armor besides shields. So this should be fun. Let's get started. The armor is going to be difficult to make, especially since I'm not a blacksmith. But what I do have is SolidWorks and a laser cutter. So let's take a look at his armor and see about how we're gonna design this. We've already done his helmet, right here. We've already done the flamethrower gauntlet and the wrist grappler, which leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pieces of armor. So we gotta design all of this. It's gonna be a lot of work. Like we do every time in SOLIDWORKS, when we're trying to create a replica, we have to use reference imagery which means what I can actually do is bring it into SOLIDWORKS as an image, scale the image, and then basically design over the image to create an actual sheet metal part, which then we can laser cut and then fabricate. Since the design process for this armor is going to be fairly similar between the different pieces, I'm just gonna go into detail on how I'm going to design the chest piece. It should give you guys a good idea of how I tackle these design problems. Step one is opening up SOLIDWORKS, the nice thing with SOLIDWORKS is when you bring in a sketch picture, you can actually scale it. So I'll take a tape measure and decide roughly how big this chest plate should be. It should be about 280 millimeters across. If we scale this to 280, it's a one-to-one -one scale and it's going to fit me. And the neat thing with this is it's literally click and drag kind of. Put a line there, and like this, this, and boom. There's the rough shape of one of the breast plates. It's important to dimension your sketch. In SOLIDWORKS, you can tell if it's not dimensioned if the lines are blue. You want them to be black. So I've actually already fully dimensioned the other sketch. So as you can see, now all the lines in SOLIDWORKS are black, which means if you try and click and drag, nothing will move around. Now we can just make an extrude boss and turn it into a sheet metal part. Now this is where things get interesting. The whole chest piece is actually made of multiple folded sheet metal parts. So you can see it actually kind of curves around at the edge of the chest, and it's got these little kind of wings that kind of flip down. We can actually create an edge flange off of that edge, and then we can dimension the shape. You can see we're starting to actually get the general shape of Mando's chest plate, which is really cool. Luckily, this is symmetric, so we can just mirror this over the center plane, and we'll be able to have both of the chest pieces. Now we need to make the backing plate in the center and the diamond, which will be really easy to do.
Ta-da! The center plate that actually connects the two, that is a bit trickier, so I'm gonna go into a bit more detail how I made that. You can see what I've actually done is I've traced the edges of the chest plate that I've already made, and I've basically made a 10 millimeter strip along the side, and that way we can weld to it on the back side. You don't actually see it, and we're not using too much material, basically creating two entire layers of stainless steel. Then, I've created this kind of edge flange off the bottom to provide us with this connection point between the chest plate and the, I guess you'd call it the ab cover, the abs, the stomach cover. I don't know if there's a technical term for that. For the lower part, I traced around the edges and made my sheet metal part and formed some edge flanges to follow the general curvature of my stomach. And now when we bring it all together, we've got the full design. But all in all, I think that's a really good start and I just have to do this for the other eight parts. So we're not gonna show you all that because it's basically the same design principles, just doing it for the different pieces. Now that the model is done, we just need to export all the flat patterns so we can laser cut them. Now we have a DXF outline that's perfectly scaled. Simple as that. I'm just gonna export the rest of these DXFs and we'll be able to start manufacturing. Now, I didn't learn how to make Mando armor overnight. Oh wait, I did. That's because I have a solid base of problem-solving skills that I've developed over the years. And you can start developing your problem-solving skills too with KiwiCo. We love partnering with KiwiCo because they help nurture kids' problem-solving abilities. And since we work with them so often, we're actually giving our viewers 50% off their first monthly crate. Sometimes, when you're small, it's easier to think big, and KiwiCo creates hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM science, technology, engineering, art, and math. We believe that the small lessons today can mean big world-changing ideas tomorrow. It's the same reason why we make our videos. Each monthly crate comes with all the supplies needed, detailed kid-friendly instructions, plus an educational magazine for further learning. With eight subscription lines, each catering to a different age group and skill set, there's something for everyone. I may not have kids myself, but after completing a few of these kits, I can't think of a better way to get kids interested in making things. Check out kiwico.com slash hacksmith50 for 50% off your first crate. Any crate, just click the link in the description below. Plus, you'll be helping support the channel. These are all the pieces we need to build our very own Mandalorian armor. We cut them out of 1 8 stainless steel, and now we just have to form them into three dimensions so that actually looks like his armor. We're gonna start with the chest piece. So you might be wondering why we have these notched cuts in the pieces of stainless steel. Now they actually serve two purposes. One, it lets me know exactly where the bend line is supposed to be, and it makes it significantly easier to bend the material. The last bend I need to make is this one here, but unfortunately my vise isn't deep enough, so I will have to use our bigger brake press. I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out so far, so I think that means we can start welding, and we might still have to do a few adjustments while we're welding, but the general shape is there, which is good.
That took forever, and that's just one piece of the armor. In fact, I think we could probably make an eight-part series on just the armor, but I don't know if you guys really want to see that. So, I think it's time for a montage. one chooses to walk the way of the Mandalore, you are both hunter and prey. How can one be a coward if one chooses this way of life? Have you ever removed your helmet? No. Has it ever been removed by others? Never. This is the way. That was a lot of work, but all the metal pieces are finally done, which means the next step is to attach them to Mando's flight suit. But before we do that, I want to make sure that the stainless steel armor is in fact actually armor. That's like no damage. Let's try some bigger ammo. Knocked it right off. It is denting it more. You can, you can definitely tell it's done a lot more damage than the bird shot. Let's try a rifle. Look at the cluster. All three right here, right over his heart, and they stopped it. It did bend in quite a bit, but it worked. Let's try a bigger rifle. How about, how about a 223? Oh yeah, right through. So the bullet was going straight through like this, but because of the deflection of the armor, it actually went this way, which arguably is worse for Mando. But let's try one more test. Let's try a shotgun slug. Oh my God, it worked. He's got a few broken ribs. It survived a slug, that is insane. We might as well try the helmet too. Oh, look at that. Barely any damage. Nice little battle scar. Let's shoot a few more. Should have used real Baskar. I think this is more than enough. It's still probably the most bulletproof Mando armor out there right now. So the next step is, how am I gonna attach this to the costume? Batman. No, man, there we go. So a good friend of mine runs Big Effect Props on Etsy, and they make this ultra-realistic, high-quality Mando flight suit meant for underneath the armor. So that's what we're gonna use for our Mando suit. So I'm really excited about this because it was actually custom-made to fit me perfectly. So let's try it on. This fits pretty nice. Now I just have to figure out how to actually attach the armor to it. So I was doing some thinking, and I actually went ahead and welded nuts onto the back of each piece of armor. That way we can put holes in the costume and literally just bolt it on with a nut and bolt. Now before I attach this to the costume, I want to add some padding so it's actually comfortable to wear. I got some really interesting material here. This is actually natural gum foam, which is very wear resistant, very padded, and it's even water resistant. Plus, with an adhesive back, I could stick it right on.
We've got all the armor padded now, and I'm pretty happy with the result. It seems like it's gonna be really durable and provide that protection for me while I'm wearing the suit. Now the next step is the chest plate. Now unfortunately we uh, damaged this a little bit with the, uh, the test with the guns, so I actually built a second one. But because of the results of this test, I decided we should probably make it even better. So I actually built a third one. And this third one actually has two layers of stainless steel across the entire chest. But all in all, it's a bit bigger, covers my chest nicer, and is definitely gonna be way stronger than that very first one. So I don't need this, I don't need that. Let's get started. all attached. It's hard to believe it's finally finished. This was a ton of work. Huge contribution from the entire team. Putting all this armor together has really taken weeks and weeks. Um, I, we couldn't show everything in the video. I did some leather work as well for some of the straps. And I also made a fireproof cape since that jetpack Bogdan made me is a little sketchy to be honest. Anyways, I think the next step is to put all this on. I get to don the suit for the first time. With the armor finally fashioned, our Hacklorian series is complete. All that's left is to put everything to the ultimate test. You definitely don't want to miss it. Our members will get to see it first, but it's not quite ready just yet. This is the way. <laughs>